afternoon. Maybe you're watching it in the evening. So good night. But if you are watching it live each and every Sunday from 8 to 8.30, live right here on many platforms, including Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and even YouTube, you can join me, Frankie Flowers, for a little bit of talk about gardens and also about your lawn. If you're wondering, hey, who the heck is this guy? Like, My name is Frankie Flowers. My real name is Frank Berry. Frankie Flowers. I'm a four-time best-selling garden author. Uh, I have also uh, wrote the four books themselves, but a lifetime of garden experience. My family has two garden centers called Bradford Greenhouse's Garden Gallery. One located just north of Bradford, the other one in Barrie, Ontario. Uh, as well, we're greenhouse growers. Uh, so I am a product, I always joke a bit, of uh, some child labor. And, but I'm here really to serve you and the community that we have on here is also here to serve you. So you can go on, you can type in uh, a question that you have about your lawn, about your garden. And if I can't get to answer it, the community that's on here today will answer it for you or help to answer it overall. Um, Cottage Life Show uh, is on right now, the Spring Cottage Life Show. I was there yesterday speaking. Uh, it was great, busy, lots going on there, lots to see as well. And people are excited for the upcoming summer season, cottage season, as we call it here in Ontario and many parts of the, uh, the country, but other people will call it the cabin instead of the cottage. And in the United States as well, they usually call it the cabin. So depending upon what you're doing, uh, it was great there yesterday. Uh, I was off last week from breakfast television uh, with shingles. Good times. That's all I got to say. Uh, still kind of going through it right now as well, but I, I'm here. And we're going to say some shout outs this morning as well. I'm just going to slide right up here. The first one to give a little shout out this morning is my good friend Suzanne, who's up there in Cottage Country itself, who's out there servicing many of the gardens. We got a good garden mind on there this morning as well with Suzanne. We'll help answer some questions out there. Good morning, Frankie from Rice Lake. Beautiful love Rice Lake. Love that as well. Denise is giving me a hi. I'm saying hi to Denise. Crystal's saying, little cheers with the coffee. Yeah, got that too. Mine's tea actually today. Hmm. Mine's a mushroom tea. It's supposed to be a, an immune boosting mushroom tea. Uh, good morning from beautiful Ancaster, of course, just outside of Hamilton. Uh, Denise is like, we still got snow. There's still lots of snow in many areas, but I will tell you my backyard is now pretty much snow free. And let's talk about that since we're going on that question right now or that comment. As soon as the snow leaves the properties or leaves our gardens, leaves our lawns, really the first thing that we need to do, I'm just going to shut my phone off here. The first thing that we really need to do is we really make sure that the ground under our foot is firm. So if we walk on our properties and we feel that the ground underfoot is spongy, meaning that the frost is out of the ground and it's so wet that it's almost kind of spongy underfoot, then what we want to do is allow that lawn, allow that garden to kind of dry up a bit. Because if we go in there and work, we walk on it, we're going to create compaction and we're going to do more harm than help. If it's firmed up, uh, because we did have a lot of snow load, so they will be quite wet right after the season and all that snow has melted. If they firmed up, th then what we do is we go in and inspect. So the first thing that you may do is inspect your lawn. If we're inspecting our lawn and all of a sudden we start to see the appearance, and I'm going to show you guys right now, if we start to see the appearance of what our tunnels, there is a little look, that's what they could look like in your lawn. We can see that the culprit over to the left-hand side is moles. And the reason why those moles are there, and it's also the same reason that you may actually be discovering this. So the other thing that you can discover as well is one day you can look in your backyard and you could notice that all of a sudden your backyard has all these crazy clumps. We're just going to click on here. These are just different websites that we're looking at. And this is with digging up the lawn. So all of a sudden you see the clumps. And that there is typical damage from usually raccoons and or skunks. So the reason why they're both there, the reason why we have mole tunnels and the reason why we'll have raccoons and or skunks digging up our lawns is they're there for grubs. Grubs is the larvae stage of a Japanese beetle. And the grubs are an early protein source for things like moles and things like raccoons and skunks. So they're actually trying to get food. If you see that damage, the way to reduce the amount of damage or to discourage uh, moles and or raccoons or skunks from digging is to put some blood meal down. Blood meal over those areas will distract them from coming because of the smell. The next solution that we need to do is to get rid of grubs. And to get rid of grubs, we would put something like a grub be gone down or a nematodes. As soon as the soil temperatures 
warm. So that'll be a little bit more towards the month of May. We will want to repair some of that damage. We'll want to rake up those areas, maybe put some soil down. However, grass seed doesn't really germinate until we have a soil temperature of around 15 degrees Celsius. So it's still early. So we can just really, at this moment, rake those areas up, clean it up, and then put some blood mill down to discourage so we don't get any further damage. Then around late April, we can start to put some grass seed down. And then as we get into the month of May, a little bit middle May, we'll start to apply some grub controls down. And then that's how we can kind of cure that solution and make sure it doesn't happen for following seasons. That's a little bit about the line. Uh, good morning from beautiful Oakville this morning. Good morning to you, to Savita, Sa I guess it would be Savita, Savita, there we go. Uh, we got another shout out this morning as well, and maybe a question here from Ottawa. I heard that cinchernella and lemongrass are good to repel mosquitoes. Is one better than the other, or are they both effective? So it's really the smell of them is what will repel some mosquitoes. So mosquitoes, this is another good tip. Another good tip is now that the snow has melted, we want to walk around our properties and we want to see anything that still has water in it, buckets, maybe some children's toys, uh, maybe some other items. Like right now I'm looking at my sons in the backyard. They have like this little jump they use and it's turned upside down. It's plastic. And so that's got some water in it. So I got to go turn that out. So anything that has standing water, I want to dump all that standing water out to reduce mosquitoes. The, citr the citronella, which is a, a citronella geranium or citrosa geranium, uh, also known as the mosquito geranium or lemongrass, they're both really effective when we actually rub them on our skin. Just planting them in our garden is not going to repel mosquitoes. Uh, well, another way that we can repel mosquitoes is just by putting, if you're sitting in your backyard, just having a fan and moving that air circulation because on a breezy and or windy day, you won't have mosquitoes. But reducing the amount of standing water, creating environments where mosquitoes can't breed, uh, wearing light colored clothing, uh, putting something like a citronella or rubbing those leaves on your skin while you're outdoors, those are all effective ways to reduce the amount of mosquitoes that are going to bite us in the spring. So are they effective just to plant them? They're not gonna repel squat, just to let you know. Uh, Christine saying, hello, hello. There you go. Hi, Frankie. Uh, Matthew, my good man, Matthew is asking, I really missed this on VT this week. Well, thank you. I miss you guys too. And I will be back on tomorrow. Um, yeah. So I'll be back there tomorrow. You, every once in a while, you may see me go, because it's my right side where I actually have shingles. And to let people know, uh, if you don't know what shingles is, shingles is usually, well, you have to have chicken pox. So I did when I was younger. A uh, shingle sits dormant, the virus sits dormant in your body. Uh, and then at a period where you actually maybe have a weakened immune sy system due to sleep deprivation and or stress, uh, then it can appear. And so that's exactly what happened. So that's why I took the week off just to catch up on sleep, to kind of calm down, to slow down. But I kind of like doing what I do and I kind of like being busy. Uh, so even though I'm pretty much the same about a soreness as what I was last week, I'm going to put a strong face on and continue to push through. Uh, Paula Polly, my good friend, I'm going to get you a hat. Yeah, Paula Paula asked for a hat, so I'm going to try to make sure that happened. Uh, Christine says, yikes, I hope you're feeling better. We'll get there. You know what? It's just, a, you know, you're like, I, I eat healthy, I work out, I do all these things, but sometimes your body and mother nature just says, yo, you. Yeah, you, you got to take care of yourself even further in other ways. Uh, good morning, Frankie. Mark from Marlene in Mississauga. Raccoons have started again to roll back the grass. So it's the same thing, right? Hmm. We're just talking. The reason why those raccoons are there and the reason why they're rolling up the grass, the reason why they're looking around, they're looking for food. That food is grubs. Put some blood meal down, that'll distract them. The only difficulty with blood meal is even after rainfall and actually kind of dissipates the smell. So we actually have to do some reapplications. Make sure it's blood meal, not bone meal. Bone meal will actually attract things. Blood meal will distract. Uh, there's critter ritter is something else that you can use. That's sometimes effective. Uh, there is as well, uh, you have some of the animal be gone, but animal be gone is more of when they're eating or tasting. Animal be gone can maybe discourage a bit, but I would really just put some applications of uh, blood meal down to distract those raccoons from rolling that lawn up. And then we're going to treat for grubs with grubby gone a little bit later on. Uh, we got Mary saying good morning this morning. 
from with the bridge and then right beside a with the bridge is brampton good morning to brampton this morning and to you kelly this morning uh we got a shout out from huntsville i love all these different communities that we got shout outs from and i think we have a question here from carmel good morning from cardova mines built a new house last year when is a good time to put out grass seed we still have a couple feet of snow that's not a couple of inches that's a couple of feet of snow so the key is, is we really, the best time to put grass seed down is when it's going to germinate. Because if we put it down too early, it can actually on a windy day, like today, I can still see the winds are quite strong. They're going to die later this afternoon. The winds are going to become weaker. Um, the, the grass seed that we could put down wouldn't germinate because it's too cold on a day like today uh, and then would blow away. So we need the soil temperature to be at least 15 degrees Celsius. So classically, gardeners used to do what was called the bare bum test which they'd pull their pants down, they'd sit, and if it was warm enough on their bum, they then say it's warm enough for seeds to germinate. I don't really recommend, maybe in Cardova mines, you don't have many neighbors too close, but if you have the neighbors close, probably not a good idea. Probably not a good idea. So you can get uh, even just a, a cooking thermometer to tell you what the soil temperature is. But generally, as soon as we start to see things actively growing outdoors, when we start to see some leaves appear and emerge in crack, the leaves start to uh, become more open. That's generally the time that we can then start to put grass seed down. So those are some good indications. I hope things go well for you up there. Uh, Kathy Wood, good morning from beautiful Hamilton Mountain, which is beautiful. It really is beautiful. Hamilton, a lot of the times people, as they drive across the Burlington Skyway, they think that's Hamilton as you're going towards Niagara on the right-hand side. That's not Hamilton. Hamilton is absolutely, in some locations, really, really pretty. Kelly, good morning from Cape Breton. Speaking of pretty, that is pretty. Uh, looking for a good, hardy, uh, pretty plant that deer don't like for cottage country in Dundee, Nova Scotia. So what we'll do, oh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'm just going to take a look at something really quick here. Uh, deer, so I'm just going to type this in, deer resistant. And perennials but sometimes i forget which ones are completely deer resistant so here's here's some i'm going to give you guys a shout out and some recommendations of the ones that we would really recommend so first off is that we need to know whether it's sun and or shade i'm assuming sun so there is there's a, a nepia which is actually a catnip which is a ground cover it is absolutely fantastic it blooms blue um I've had this in my own gardens. I'm gonna show you a picture of this. There's many others. So first, let me give you a list of some of them and then I'll show you the picture of some of these. So you can do, bee balm is deer resistant, cat mint, nip mint, which is nepia is resistant. Many of the salvias, which are zoned to zone three, which are gonna be good for you there as well. There's spreading of salvias. Russian sage, zone four, maybe not as zone hardy for you that would be there. Uh, lungwort, which is more on shade, which is really a good plant for you as well. Uh, and then the rest of the list that we have, well, there's, uh, uh, there is also some an anemones, which are zone four hardy. Uh, of course, if it's full sun, coneflowers, coneflowers, fantastic. They are amazing. There are some different hardy geraniums, which are some of the cranes bells, which are really good for you as well. Uh, yarrow, that's going to be fairly, uh, really kind of almost um, an invasive plant if it gets too under control. But this is what I want to show you. I want to show you this is kind of a plant and people think catnip, right? They think, eh. but this guy here, if you want a ground cover, and I'm going to show a picture to you guys right now. If you want a ground cover that is super easy, after it blooms, you cut it back. It'll actually give you a secondary bloom. And when this, the color of this, when this is in clusters and that beautiful blue color, this is amazing. So the variety of this one is cat's pajamas, but there are many different varieties that are out there, but there's a good one for you. So those are some different options that you can use uh, in that beautiful garden space that you have uh, in beautiful Cape Breton, Ontario. So I hope that helps you out there as well. So good morning from Penetang Machine. Uh, Penetang is beautiful on the shorelines of good old Georgian Bay. Uh, we have another comment here. Rodents have turned the grass into the garden upside down. So once again, that's what they're doing. They're just looking. The reason why they're turning it upside down is they're looking for food. And generally, the reason why they're looking for food is there's a scent there. Hmm. That scent will be grubs. 
So we got to reduce those grub populations to re remedy this. But right now it's too early to apply anything for grub control. So really just kind of tamping those areas back down, putting some blood meal down because they don't really like the smell. That'll discourage them and reduce the amount of further damage that they may do. But they're actually getting rid of grubs for you as well. So we got another person saying good morning from beautiful, sunny Karakeko. Mm, Lori, I probably said it wrong, but I've never been there before. Should I go? That's what I'm asking. Uh, Janet this morning is saying good morning, Frankie. How are you? Missed you on BT. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, guys. Uh, I will be back on breakfast television tomorrow. I'll be there Monday through Friday. All this week, you guys will see me. Suzanne's out there answering some questions this morning. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, good morning, Lori. Beautiful spot. That's what I love about right now. Some people on the community, if you're just joining us for the first time, there are many people that are on here week after week. And now the community is kind of getting along, getting together. And maybe we should do a meetup. Maybe one day up at the Garden Gallery and Barry, we can do a meetup. Maybe we'll do that. How about that? Uh, Lisa. Uh, we have Morning Frankie. We missed you on BT this week. Hope you're feeling better. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the shout outs that are out there, too. Uh, good morning from Wendy Rosso. Good morning, Deborah. I hope you're doing great there. Uh, Shelly is another good morning from Oakville this morning. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys as you guys are giving shout outs, and I love the shout outs, but there's something else that I wanted to cover that people may be seeing on their lawns right now as well. And what you may be seeing on your lawn right now is some damage, and it's not related to uh, damage from uh, a rodent or even tunneling, but all of a sudden you go out there and you can see some spots. Now, some of the spots, if you have a female dog, you can see the burn spots that a female dog will create. But this here is a little bit of a different spot. And we're just going to kind of type in here. This is just a different blog that's there, but we can go right into that picture that's here. Uh, and this is one of four pictures as a collection. So as soon as we're starting to see the snow go and we look at our lawn, you can see almost how it appears like the thatch from the lawn has come up, but you can see how it's matted together. That there is what's called snow mold. So snow mold is due to heavy, wet snow that sat on our lawn for extended periods of time. And with that, it doesn't allow any oxygen or uh, really any airflow underneath the snow. And with that, the compaction creates a mold. That mold in spring causes these patches that we see in the beginning that's here. The way that we remedy that is as soon as we see that our lawn is firm underfoot, so it's not spongy, not too wet, we'll go up and we'll rake the lawn. By raking the lawn, we'll actually improve the air circulation into that snow mold. We'll then do an overseeding once the soil temperatures are a little bit warmer and really a little bit of a top dressing. And that would be the best way to remedy it. As well, what I would recommend is before doing the top dressing and overseeding, after raking the lawn, I would recommend doing an aeration. An aeration would actually pull out the cores of the, the, the soil of the, of the grass. And with that, by pulling those cores out, improves more circulation of air to the lawn, but actually allows for the flow of, of nutrients down. Because sometimes snow mold is really a sign that you have compacted soils. And with that, now's the time to check for those things. So aeration, the reason why we're aerating a lawn, if you have a high traffic flow area where people are walking a lot, or let's say that you have a smaller backyard and you have uh, a family of four with two very active kids that love to run back and forth in the back lawn or some dogs, that aeration will actually allow for that lawn to absorb moisture being rainfall, will allow it to actually take a nutrient being that turf builder fertilizer that you'll put down in spring. Uh, those are the things that the aeration will do. Uh, I want to, I'll draw some attention to the website a little bit later on, but right now I want to give some shout outs to Marlene from Armprior, uh, just outside of the Ottawa, which is a beautiful spot there as well. Uh, Christine, uh, from my friend from Prince Edward County, good morning to you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Kelly has a comment and or a question. Kelly here from Great Breton still. Lots of snow, but thinking of spring, looking for a good plant that deer do not like for cottage country. We've already answered that question there for you. Uh, one thing that I was really recommended was the cat's pajamas was the one variety we we're talking about, which is a cat mint. So that cat mint is actually a perennial one that's actually an ornamental that has a beautiful blue flower. And the nepia, it's also known as a nepia, that's the Latin name. It's a, an amazing plant. I used it around my pool area. Uh, it was fantastic for actually attracting some pollinators uh, as well as after the bloom period happened. I just cut it back and I got a secondary bloom and it was, it gave me a good show, really nice show that's there. 
but as well, cone flowers if you want something a little bit more height. Really important when you're asking me for a plant and for an area, I need to know whether it's sunny or shady. So anytime that you ask me about a plant, plant recommendation, I need to know the light. So if you want a perennial plant, I need to know where you are because then I can figure out the hardiness zone. If you want a perennial plant, I need to know where you are and the light. So I would be, I'm in Nova Scotia. Uh, this is the area I'm in and it's this full sun area. Boom, beautiful. I can give you better recommendations that way that are there. Uh, we have another good morning this morning from Sunny Fergus. Good to know that the sun's out in Fergus. The sun is not out here yet in Bradford. Uh, Francesca, hey, good morning to you. Uh, ran into you Wednesday at Pro Bass. Thank you for the chat and the photo. Hope you are feeling better. Uh, it was good. Yeah, so I was at uh, Bass Pro uh, because my son is really into fishing. My son, Matheson, and it was his 14th birthday on Friday. So I was there getting him some different things so that he can go out there and catch that big fish. Always searching for the big fish. She's my little outdoors lover. Uh, Christine, what's the best spring care for patchy lawn? Uh, we were trying to repair bare areas and now have areas that look like tufts. Also, bunnies are under the deck. So um, the one thing that in, in early spring is when we're repairing the lawn, we really right away immediate spring is a good time to do once the ground frost is out and once the, again, the lawn is firm underfoot, early spring, you can do aeration. So you can go out there, aerate the lawn. You can rake the lawn early spring. We're not really putting any grass seed down until a little bit later when we start to see things start to grow actively outdoors and the soil temperatures warm. At least 15 degrees Celsius is where grass seed will germinate. So that's kind of key. After you put grass seed down, it's really about moisture. We got to make sure that there's lots of moisture and grass seed just needs to make contact with soil doesn't need a whole lot of soil on top. The tufts that you're speaking of, those little tufts that are there, I'd love to see it because it actually could be a different variety of grass. So there are some invasive varieties of grass that appear to look like grass and they are a grass type plant, but they may need to be removed. So uh, Christine, if you can send me an email of what the lawn looks like, Frankie at FrankieFlowers.com. Once again, Frankie at FrankieFlowers.com. I can help you. Also bunnies under the deck. So those bunnies under the deck, if you just have a few, a few become many. So you will want to either trap them or discourage them to go elsewhere. Uh, or if you want to keep them around, there could be some bunny damage that you'll have on some of your plants, especially if you're growing lettuces or anything like uh, even some cabbage or kale, even some of your ornamental plants, the bunnies will go ahead and eat. If you're ornamental plants and you want to keep the bunnies around, you can always use Animal Be Gone because Animal Be Gone, you can spray. It actually puts Bitrix on the plants themselves, which will discourage those bunnies from eating away. Uh, beautiful Windsor this morning. We're saying hello to Michelle Claire. Good morning from Windsor on the border between Windsor and Detroit. How you doing? Uh, is blood meal safe for dogs? Uh, blood meal, Sandra, is safe for dogs. Dogs will stay away from it. It's actually an organic uh, nutrient fertilizer. It won't harm the dog. But if you were to put bone meal down, your dog would dig because bone meal is really made actually from bones and it would actually make your dogs want to dig to find a bone that's not there. So don't use um, any of the, the bone meal. Blood meal will be fine for them as well. Luann and Perry Sound, uh, good morning to you as well, Luann. Uh, coming up in um, later spring, I will be up in Perry Sound at the Stocky Center. Um Stocky Center is a wonderful, wonderful theater-like facility. And I'm going to do a talk on the wacky world of gardening. We're going to have some good laughs, some good fun. Uh, and it's kind of my comical look at what gardeners do to have great, gar great gardens and the lengths they'll go and how a non-gardener or a neighbor walking by may think you're like a little weird. Yeah. So that's going to be coming up at the Stocky Center. If you just want to look at the Stocky Center, you can find out more information that's there. Uh, Pat, uh, good morning from Riverview, New Brunswick. Love it, New Brunswick. We're getting snow here this morning. Yeah, you know, depending upon where you live in Canada, we have many different variations of spring. So I'll bring up the website. So if you look at my website and you'll actually see when, so it's frankieflowers.com, that's my website. Some of the articles that I'm featuring right now are uh, spring gardening, 101, top tips, lawn, early spring garden tips, uh, and then starting your vegetable seeds indoors or out, growing vegetables, 
uh, as well, early kind of checklist. So you'll see the reference here to early spring. So generally in mo most of the writing that I do and many of the even kind of checklists that I'll do, I'll do early spring, spring, early summer, summer, early fall, fall, and then we'll do early winter, winter. Because everybody has an early spring, everybody has a spring, depending upon the weather that's out there. Everybody will have a summer, everybody will have a fall. But if you're reading this and you're reading my website and you're reading it from like the friends we're just saying here in Nova Scotia or New Brunswick, your spring is different than my spring in terms of the dates of the calendar. So that's the reason why I kind of, kind of deem those. And even in my books that I wrote, you'll see I break them down to early spring, spring, and that's because everybody has those periods of time. So it's not untypical for you in New Brunswick to get snow into the month of May. Very easy. You can even get some into June. And even here in uh, just north of Toronto, I live an hour north of Toronto, uh, we can get snow. I remember many of a Mother's Day weekend snow. I remember many, many of a Victoria Day weekend where we have snow in the forecast as well. But you never know what you're going to get. We got another good morning this morning. From Golden Lake, a shout out to you this morning as well. Uh, Leslie this morning, good morning to you from Skoka. How early can I start dahlias inside and how should I do that? So you can actually start them now if you wish because we're in to the end of March. Next week is April. So if we figure in four weeks, we'll be in May. In six weeks, we'll be in mid-May. In eight weeks, we'll be near the end of May. So that means at the end of May that you'll be able to plant outside in Muskoka, no problem. So you're going to start them in pots. And really what you want to do is start them in uh, a six to eight inch grower pot. So you're going to have those dahlia roots. Uh, each one should actually have at least three shoots and or three eyes that are there. So that's how you kind of determine whether you have a nice shoot that's there. You're going to plant them in that, in that pot in potting soil. You're going to just bury the top of the shoots that uh, will be there, the dahlias, you're going to provide them with water and you're going to, they really don't need any sun until they start to germinate. So once they start to germinate and you start to see some leaves emerge, that's where you're going to need to put them in a south or west facing room. And you're just going to grow them on. And uh, while you're, they're sitting in that room, I would suggest that every week you rotate the pots. So you're turning the pots. So that way you don't have it growing on one side towards the light. By rotating the pots, you'll actually have more even growth. You're watering them, keeping them fairly moist in the beginning until they start to bear their leaves. And then once they have good foliage, we're allowing them to dry out in between waterings. That'll actually slow the growth and make more of a sturdy plant. And then you also want to fertilize. So you want to fertilize with like a miracle grow all purpose. You want to do that at least once to twice a month uh, while they're inside. But that's you're not fertilizing them until they actually have true leaves that are there as well. Good question, by the way. Um, we got another comment this morning, this morning from uh, Corrine, looking forward to grass, still have snow on the ground. Many people still do, but it snow comes quick and goes quick. It's amazing. As long as we get a little bit of heat that's out there. We got a thank you this morning as well from Claudine. Uh, Tammy has a question this morning, I think. Is there an easier way to rake up pine needles without losing all my mulch? It's rubber mulch. So it, there is no easy way because those pine needles you can, you can blow them. So the rubber mulch is fairly dense. So you can actually get um, uh, probably a battery operated uh, kind of like leaf blower and put it on a low setting. And being on that low setting, it should be able to blow most of the pine needles off the rubberized mulch. And then you'll be able to rake it. So you can blow them off into like the lawn and then rake from there. But there'll be other ones that will stick into the rubberized mulch because the needles will actually kind of with the mulch will fall over top and we'll actually pin those needles down, those pine needles. So that'll help. That'll make it maybe a little bit easier, um, but it's still going to be a challenge. So we got one more question that's out there because we're right now just coming up on 30 minutes. Good morning from Barry. Is it true that if you sprinkle cornmeal on your lawn, it'll get rid of grubs also? So cornmeal is really corn gluten. So corn gluten, which is a variety of cornmeal, which is basically your weed preventers is what will be, it won't do anything to grubs. <laughs> it actually attract more birds and more things to your lawn because the cornmeal is also edible. So they'll actually go there and eat the cornmeal, then dig up your lawn. But corn gluten when applied appropriately to your lawn will actually be a pre-emergent, meaning what it does is it coats weed seeds. So if you're looking and you had an issue with crabgrass last year, 
early spring once the lawn firms up. And just before we start to see things crack outdoors, we want to put a weed preventer, which is a corn gluten down. And that weed preventer will prevent those seeds, those annual weed seeds like things like crabgrass from germinating. And by doing so, it's going to reduce the amount of crabgrass that you'll have on your lawn. So the cornmeal will do nothing for grubs whatsoever. Um, I want to give a shout out to everybody that actually put comments down. If I didn't get to your question, uh, please, people that are watching right now, take a look at some of the comments. If you're a gardener, offer your suggestions, offer your advice. You'll see me here every Sunday and also you'll see me tomorrow morning on breakfast television. I hope you guys all have a wonderful Sunday. Uh, get out there and get inspired. If you can go to the Spring Cottage Life Show. I know up in Barrie, there is the Barrie Home Show that's at the Saddleland Center today. There are many CD Saturdays that are coming up with many hort societies, including like Wasaga Beach, my friends at Essex Hort Society. I'll be doing a talk coming up in the month of May as well for Calgary Horticultural Society. Uh, so for all those that love to garden, thanks for being here today. And let's just hope that your remainder of your Sunday is blooming great and have a great growing week ahead.